Christ of Rigo! Good evening. Uh, I'm a blind comedian. Uh, brace yourself for dark humour. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, blindness tonight. Uh, for a start, it's uh, Christmas, isn't it? So keep the party vibe going, I thought. Uh, but also, uh, when you start out in comedy, the bit of advice that you get given is to talk about what you know, what you've got direct experience of. So immediately, two things sprung to mind. I thought I can either talk about what it's like not being able to see, or I can talk about being black. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why you're laughing. But, uh... Uh, so the other reason for talking about blindness is if I don't talk about it when I'm on stage, I've found that people in the audience are whispering to their friends, trying to work out whether I am blind or not. Now, they presumably think they're being inaudible and discreet, but being blind, I have the super hearing ability of a bat. <laughs> uh, which actually comes in quite handy, because I bloody love killing moths. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, the other reason as well for talking about it is if I don't talk about blindness, people will Google it. I know this because I know the most popular searches in Google for my name. The most popular searches for Google in my name are... Uh, David Eagle Blind, David Eagle Disability, or my personal favourite, What's Wrong with David Eagle? <laughs> so I find it's best to just to address the elephant in the room, uh, which if you're blind you do by sense of smell. <laughs> but generally speaking, if people want to ask me about my blindness or talk about it, they'll do it with a degree of sensitivity and politeness. However, I was in Australia last year, Ollie, Yes, I was in Australia. I find they've got much more of a brash, confident, upfront approach to life. Uh, I don't know if you... Would you agree with that, Ollie? Yeah. There's no need to call me a cunt, mate. Calm down. <laughs> it's unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> but I'll give you an example, because I'm not the kind of person to just uh, crudely stereotype an entire country. Uh, crudely stereotyping, that's not me. Uh, that's the French. <laughs> I'm in this pub in Australia, and this man who I've never met before just sidles up to me, and his opening gambit is, what the fuck's wrong with you, mate? Are you on drugs? <laughs> Which I thought was an interesting chat-up line. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that is a famous Australian pick-up line. You know, I've not consulted the famous Australian rule books on flirting. Uh, the didgeridoos and don'ts of antipodean seduction. <laughs> 101 ways to get down under. <laughs> How to have fun in the bush. So I said to him... <laughs> I said... Are you referring to my eyes? Because sometimes my eyes will move around in their sockets, searching for the light. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, are you referring to my eyes? And I thought, he's going to cotton on to the fact that I'm blind now, and he's going to adjust his brashness accordingly. But there was no chance of that. He just goes, yeah, of course I'm referring to your eyes. Make the wobbling around up and down, side to side. What the fuck's going on with you, mate? You want drugs? So I thought, well, here's the thing, you know, he's Australian, seemingly therefore his default position is brashness and confidence. I'm British, so of course, naturally, I feel awkward. <laughs> For him, on his behalf. <laughs> I thought, someone's got to be awkward in this situation. It's clearly not going to be him. I'll take one for the team. <laughs> so I said, I said, what it is, my friend, is I'm blind. And I said it as sensitively and as politely as possible, because I didn't want him to feel upset. And I waited, I waited maybe for the tears to well up in his eyes. Maybe, maybe for him to pull me into an embrace when he realises that his brash, confident Australian ways have just got him into trouble with his poor British blind sensitive soul. <laughs> but there's no chance of that. He just goes, ah, oh, well that's a fucking shame, mate, because I was looking for some drugs. See you later. Don't applaud him, you bastards. Unbelievable. <laughs> now, you've been a lovely audience so far, and I should also thank you for not heckling me, because I should have warned you at the start, it's only fair not to heckle me, because being a disabled comic, I can't technically report any heckles as a hate crime. <laughs> However, there are some downsides to being blind when it comes to doing comedy. I can't do what a lot of comedians do uh, to remember their jokes. Uh, what they'll do is they'll write their jokes on their hands. Uh, but I read Braille, and there's no joke that I have that is funny enough to have it perforated into my body. <laughs> To be honest, once I've recovered from the skin and bone damage, I don't think I'm going to forget that joke in a hurry, am I? <laughs> it's like, oh, what's the next joke? Oh, yeah, the one that I severed an artery for. Huh? <laughs> and never really gets much of a laugh either, so it was literally all in vain. <laughs> and the other thing with Braille is you can't really rub it out, so I wouldn't be able to replace any of the jokes. I just have to keep adding more jokes to different parts of my anatomy. My arms, my legs, and my penis, if it was a really long joke. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't a joke, people. It's true what they say about us black guys. <laughs> uh, 
come and see me after the show if you are interested. Uh, although be warned, if we do end up making love tonight, uh, you will be in for a bumpy ride. Uh, because my cock is covered in Braille. Yes. Well, I think I've some lovely mental imagery to leave you with. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Uh, David Eagle!